the glitchless uh, early game, but I will probably be doing some minor glitches later on. Uh, 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 quick, quick info, guys. It appears that we do not have any audio on Twitch right now. Um, uh, let's see. Hang on. Okay, now I can definitely hear yeah, I that I am talking. Call now only. But no the Twitch, game audio is still no missing. Audio. All right, we'll we'll handle this. We can keep talking in the yeah. interim. All right. Maybe I just need to turn off the game volume. All right. So yeah, so uh, I guess we got to recap uh, all the things we we said um, here. Um, so yeah. Metroid Dread uh, had some interest in bingo at the beginning of the speed run, like when the game first came out and when it first started uh, getting speed ran. Then it kind of petered out a bit. The interest in it kind of uh, waned just because no one was really putting in the... Like, there wasn't enough people who wanted to put it together to actually turn it into something in the end. And then from there, uh, it kind of just... Nothing ever came of it. Uh, so 64 and I, for this event, essentially, just kind of went on our own and made a... Uh, somewhat extensive goal list or an attempt to make a extensive goal list um i should say um so the beginning of bingo is pretty static um up pretty much up through varia suit there's going to be only pretty minor variations just because that's what we're restricted to in the game um there's just not a lot of options for uh, a divergence up to that point. Um, Varia Suit is where the game really opens up and you really start to be able to get a lot of options, uh, both with and without glitches and both intended and unintended skips for the game. Um, for those of you who haven't played Metroid Dread before, um, the game is segmented into some number of areas. I can't remember the number offhand and essentially each area has a um has an emmy air like an emmy area that you kind of weave in and out of and through in multiple steps and stages uh throughout your exploration of of the region yeah um, and then yeah and then the emmy is basically a stealth section where you have to avoid it uh yeah, the Emmy is effectively a one-hit KO. Um, you do get two opportunities to... Uh, you get two opportunities to uh, parry it, which is the melee combat mechanic in this game. Um, where if you hit it, the, the Emmy gets stunned and you can run away. Uh, but if you miss the second one, you are dead completely. Um, however, unlike other Metroid games... Uh, Metroid Dread is actually very forgiving when it comes to deaths, relatively speaking. It can be still be quite punishing in some scenarios uh, because there are a lot of checkpoints in the game. Uh, anytime you cross an Emmy door is a checkpoint. Um, all of the Atom stations, uh, the map stations, I think that's all of them, are all save points and checkpoints. Um, Anytime you pick up a major item is a save point or a checkpoint, not a save point. That is, there, there is a difference between a checkpoint and a save point. Um, a save point, you can actually save the game in a checkpoint. Uh, it's just like a respawn. Um, and defeating the Emmy in each area uh, will grant you a power up. Um, there are six total Emmys 
well, seven, I guess, if you got the broken Emmy. Yeah. Also, a new mechanic to this game is the slide move that you're uh, seeing me use a lot. Uh, and I should also note that we don't have Morph Ball yet, which is highly unusual for a Metroid game. Because normally Morph Ball is like the first thing you get in most Metroid games. Yeah, Me uh, Morph is actually is very, very late by Metroid standards here in Metroid Dread. Um, which is part of the reason that the early game in Dread Bingo pretty much is pretty linear, at least so far. Um, I'm sure that there are ways that the goal list can be developed further and uh, people can refine their skill sets because this is also obviously very unrefined. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So one note there, like I shot open that door during the uh, like as I was stepping on the plate there to open up the the thermal pad. Uh, and that me is going to be useful for getting a missile pack later. Uh, is there. So, with the thermal doors open, that gives me access to the first uh, central unit, which is what allows us to actually defeat the ME in this area. Yeah. Try to go for a jump there that would have been slightly faster, but... Yeah, so we're at the central unit, which, uh, if you played other Metroid games, is, reminds you a lot of the Mother Brain fight in, like, the original Metroid and Super Metroid. Nope. Gotta love accidentally mapping, trying to skip cutscenes. So yeah, each of these Emmys has a quick kill. Uh, now, I'm not doing the most optimal quick kill strats for all of these Emmys. The, some of them are easier than others, and I'll be attempting the really easy ones. But yeah, so this will be the second major item. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, uh, our our talk about the goal list kind of got lost actually uh, because of the audio issues. Um, so the goal list can kind of be thought of in a couple of different segments or a couple of different groups. Um, there's a group of sort of task based um, goals where essentially you have to complete a task. Uh, while meeting some condition, typically. Um, you can see that in uh, bottom right of the board with obtain grapple beam without speed booster. Um, those are primarily ways to showcase the uh, um, intended skips from Mercury Steam in the, uh, in the game. Um, there's quite a few of them. Uh, for example, uh, in the Kraid fight, there is a bomb launcher that uh, insta kills the that insta kills the or insta kills him um, like just one one hit and done basically. Um, and normally you would not have bombs going there, but clearly it's intended that you are able to reach bombs before that. Um, there's a, a way to get grapple early. There's a couple ways to get grapple early, technically speaking. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of potential skips. Um, there's uh, classic skip mechanisms like hell runs uh, through the hot and cold uh, areas of the game. Although 
due to the game's uh, exponential damage curve for environmental damage, it's very difficult to do so. Um, and then outside of those skip-based stuff, there you, you have your pretty standard, um, you know, individual collection goals, uh, collect-a-thon goals, where it's, you know, collect a bunch of things in total or... You know, collect some number of things from a pool of items, um, and then a bunch of boss goals. Um, and there's a couple that are, uh, you know, pick up the item, like a specific item from a specific location, uh, like the Crane Power Bomb tank. That's just a, a very specific uh, goal to do. Um, something that's really interesting about Dread is. Uh, the way power bombs are handled is actually pretty interesting. Um, you can pick up power bomb tanks before you actually receive the power bombs, uh, and doing so does not give you the power bombs, but it does increase your power bomb capacity by one. Um, so there are a bunch of power bomb tanks that you can get before getting power bombs, um, and I don't think we have any of the power bomb goals on here, but there's there's some interesting interplay with um, you know getting power bombs normally versus just picking up an extra power bomb tank along the way. All right, yeah. so first go first goal down. Uh, it's a pretty free goal. Yeah. All things considered. <laughs> That's yeah. basically a free space because, yeah, you really can't leave this first area without defeating Corpius. Not uh, without glitch major glitches, at least. I mean, even with major glitches, I'm not it's sure that that's... pretty that's... limited. Yeah, so Zizimor's yeah. doing a trick there called a cloak slide, I think it's called. Uh, yeah. We're basically by... Um, Cloaking during the slide animation, or like right before the slide animation, he can maintain his forward momentum through the slide while cloaked and not worry about the slow, the slowdown associated with having Phantom Cloak, Phantom Cloak active. Uh, look, looking through the board here, um, I don't know how much thought 64 has put into what goals he's going to be doing. Um, but there's some, there's some interesting collectathon goals uh, that synergize pretty well. Obviously, the 125 and the 150 total missile goals synergize with each other very well. Um, yeah. Five missile packs in Gavorin is pretty nice with that, along with the uh, Gavorin Missile Plus tank. Um, when we say missile tanks, we actually exclude Missile Plus tanks. So, you know, five missile packs is specifically pick up five regular, like, plus two missiles. Um, yeah, the Missile Plus tanks give you ten missiles. The regular ten. missile packs give you two. Which is also somewhat different from other Metroid games in the past uh that's not really that relevant um i don't know which three map stations he's gonna go for but that should be pretty free yeah uh um and which or nor which two boss counter cuts he, he's gonna get um those yeah. are just free goals basically again yeah well, i say free you have to do them but there's a good question about like when do you do them because um uh, fun, fun fact is that the um, most in most scenarios the counter cut scenes from bosses are actually slower than the than just like fighting them norm like and dealing damage normally. Um, yeah, it's mostly because it reduces the damage that your weapons do during the counter cut scene. Yeah. So, uh, it's... and then there's also you know like loss of timing due to the the cutscenes themselves as well. Yeah. So unfortunately, Catarus is kind of the 
like most like or the area that has the least divergence possible really like you're At pretty least early just batteries. Yeah, you're pretty much on a rail for this entire section because of opening all the thermal doors and everything that you need to progress. And once you get Morph Ball and Varia Suit, then things start to open up a little bit more. But yeah, this early game is... Uh, yeah, there's not a ton of divergence. Also, the first Emmy doesn't really, tr the Artari Emmy doesn't really troll you much. This second Emmy can has a few really awkward spawns. Uh, so hopefully I don't get too many of them. Uh, so hopefully I don't get too many of them. Although I do also need to parry two more amines. Seems we might have lost game audio again. I'm... Okay. So, I here I'm just gonna attempt to get the parry. No. Okay, so I got my second parry. I don't know if we can get confirmation if, uh... Are if the commentary is still audible or if it's just the game audio that is a problem. Um, it appears that game audio is finally here, but we have an echo as far as I can tell. Ah, the echo was just on my end. All right, then that's great. Okay, cool. We are, we are... Sorry, it's just about that. Um, never a marathon without tank issues, obviously. Uh, but back to the game. Um, yeah, as 64 was saying, um, the early part of Catarys is very trolly. And even the middle, the late parts of Catarys can kind of troll it. But uh, the enemy is very trolly, and the there's not a lot of divergence early, or early on here, uh, just because we're on a rail. Yeah, also there's a lot of enemies here that hit pretty hard, so... Obviously, um, but your strength does not necessarily grow proportionally. So there's kind of like an, an interesting, like, grasp function of the, uh, Uploading data. of like, you know, the relative strength of enemies. Because like, when you leave, like, you know, when you first enter Cataris, you know, the, the enemies do more damage, but you've also like picked up some more health. But then you go through patterns without getting much in the way of upgrades, and you go out to uh, Dairon, and the game's like, yeah, here, here's some much stronger enemies, and it's not a... It can be a not very fun time if you're not careful, but 
because the trip to Dairon, like your first trip to Dairon is relatively short, it's not that big of a deal. And then you go and you pick up Morph Ball, and you, you're not expected to go back to Dairon for a while until you've got a bunch of uh, other upgrades. And that's actually, that happens pretty frequently. Uh, although the Dairon, like the Catarist, the, di like the uh, dip out of Catarist into Dairon is like one of the places that is the most prominent uh, in that regards. Yeah. So we'll be heading to Dairon very shortly. I have, I think, one more Emmy section to go through. And also this section where we're draining the lava from around this area. Uh, don't see any energy part goals, so uh, I'll probably skip that energy part that we can see right below. Energy parts are kind of unique in this game. Uh, also, this is what I was talking about when I say that this Emmy can be a troll sometimes. Uh, he likes to just stand right in front of the exit. Uh, uh, yeah, give me, I'll do that during the elevator. Uh. Yeah, uh, that is not the only place that he can do that either, but that is one of the places it happens the most often. Uh, the way the Emmy spawns work is uh, when you enter the Emmy zone, there is a pool of specific spawn locations, depending on uh, what door. what door you enter from, um, and it, it, uh, it randomly picks one location from that. So yeah, the game thankfully gives you an energy tank after all the, all the stuff you have to do in Cateris, so you do kind of get the energy refill before you head to Dairon, but you also then have to go through this next room that has some uh, kind of tough enemies in it. But yeah, I'm gonna try to pseudo screw as many of these enemies as I can. The pseudo screw is what we call using holding the charge beam and it creates a little aura around you that damages uh it damages enemies but it also it'll kill weaker enemies and if it doesn't kill the enemy then the enemy still deals damage to you but if it kills the enemy then you don't take damage turn me up in your discord apparently apparently i am very quiet all right okay. well i turned it up in obs but that should accomplish the same thing hope hopefully yeah. live audio balancing <laughs> let's go um <laughs> So yeah, so this is one of the first instances of the game where we kind of, like, where the game is like, yeah, you're in one area, but you need to dip out and go to another, um, and you can basically do nothing in the area. Because uh, all we're going to pretty much be able to do here is get the wide beam and go back to Cataris to get Morph Ball afterwards. Uh, once we get Morph Ball, we have some options, but the only good option is Variasu, at which, after which the world is kind of our oyster and we can do pretty much whatever we want uh, within reason of course uh, 64 will also probably get a parry off here against the uh 
orange Emmy on his way out. Yeah, I I'll probably get it later because like it's the Emmy sequence yeah, in Dairon is kind of scripted. You'll see what I mean when it happens. Basically, there's a cutscene where it chases you halfway. So, I, yeah, because the Diaron Emmy is the one that has speed booster. So, uh, it is extremely fast, and the game is not shy about showing that off. Yeah. It, so. it also makes for a very fun Emmy encounter, though. Um, so yeah, so another thing about the Emmys is that each of them has a different one of Samus's powers, um, and you absorb that power when you defeat them. Uh, but it makes up for some really cool progressive interactions and making the Emmys uh, distinct from one another. Um, so the uh, they can all climb on walls, uh, but the that's because the one in Artaria has the spider magnet um, ability. And then they can all, and then after, but the one in Artaria can't crawl through vents. Like one, one tile has spaces. Uh, but then you get the one from Hatteras that has Morph Ball and can. And then, then they all do different things. This one is super fast. One of them can shoot lasers through walls. One of them can freeze you and so on and so forth. Also, uh, the, so we have these wide beam boxes now that we have the wide beam and they are absolutely horrible as far as their hitbox is concerned. Uh, you basically have to hit them like dead straight on or it with a charge shot where it doesn't work. So you'll notice I kind of like like freeze in place when I'm trying to shoot the wide beam boxes and so that I actually hit them. Yeah, they can be very, very But yeah, so yeah, as CJ said, like we literally just went to Dairon just to get the wide beam and now we're returning back to Cataris. Uh, cause there's a wide beam door in the way of, uh, us getting to the Emmy here. All right. I feel like I always go the wrong way on this particular Emmy section. Yeah, this Emmy section has some weird geometry or geography, I guess, would be a better way to describe it. So now... Where the optimal path is very unintuitive. Are you over the quick kill? Yeah. This is probably the most straightforward quick kill. Yeah, it's basically just stand outside the door and blast the enemy. Fun fact about the Emmys is that the time it takes, like, from the moment that you overheat the protective covering to the time that it actually explodes off is exactly enough time to charge the uh, Omega Cannon. Uh, so if you do it perfectly, like, you can stop an Emmy, like, directly in front of you and blast it before it has a chance to move and actually kill you. Which is a fun fact. It's like parrying it, but for... Yeah, so now that we have the Morph Ball, now we can, uh, yeah, now we can 
fit through the small gaps that are not just directly floor level. And we will be going straight to Varia suit, I imagine. Yeah. There's really nothing else to do. Uh, that's reasonable right now. So. Maybe th I have something reasonable to do right now, if I may. Yep. Go for it. Uh, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, I wanted to quickly remind our viewers that uh, we are watching, we're, you are watching Bingo Thon uh, Winter 2023, five years of Bingo Thon. So it's an anniversary edition, and we are raising funds for Fred Hutch uh, organization. They're doing research on cancer and other diseases. And this research is expensive and it needs to be funded. And if you want to make a difference, uh, we're grateful for any donation. Any amount works. Don't feel ashamed if you can't afford much. We know in this economy it's, it's asked a lot uh, to, to donate. Um, but uh, you can win some prizes if you donate. So we have like a bingo phone mark for as little as five dollars uh, donated total during the marathon. You can win a fifth anniversary mark for ten dollars, a Super Mario RPG EU digital code for thirty, and Team Seventeen, our sponsor, they were so kind and uh, offered us game packs, so you can get them for twenty-five dollars cumulatively donated throughout the marathon. And the big game pack can be won for forty dollars total. Um, don't forget to choose a bid war or incentive when you uh, send up the donation because we still have some awesome goals left open. And we hope to uh, raise a total of two thousand dollars this bingo thon, so that the staff has to do karaoke at the end. And we are almost um, uh, not quite three quarter there. Um, so please, we, we're more than halfway there, so please uh, uh, keep the donations coming and uh, get to, to help us reach the $2,000 goal so we can have, we have raised $15,000 for Fred Hutch in total. Thanks for you guys. Right, so yeah, 64 is making his way up now to obtain the Varia suit, uh, which will give him heat resistance. Uh, which is a big step here. Uh, and then we'll really get to start, see the, the bingo gears start to turn. Uh, when we first started talking about doing this run, we actually considered um, briefly the possibility of starting like right here at Varia with nothing else picked up except for the major items, charge, uh, more wide and uh, phantom cloak but ultimately we decided that like it really wasn't our decision to make grip since we were just kind of putting this together and that would like have to be like a larger community decision essentially uh, there's a lot of merit to starting here uh namely that you cut out like 30 minutes of line linearity but there's also some interesting early game routing in especially in artaria where there's a bunch of questions about what missile packs you pick up um, and whether or not you do things like uh, like if you're playing in not like not a glitchless early game like do you do this the pseudo wave trick to skip the first emmy and uh, or and skip a missile pack consequently uh, do you do the pseudo wave to you to do corpius before you have charge beam which is a thing you can do I don't know why anyone would voluntarily do that. It's not even the fastest speedrun route anymore. Uh, it was at one point. But... So yeah, so 64, what is the plan now? Yeah, so there isn't anything that uh, for uh, defeating Creed uh, with bombs, so I think I'm gonna be just defeating Creed now, uh, cause that will, uh, yeah, cause that just like is kind of the thing that the game kind of expects you to do now, and thus is the least out of the way thing. Yeah, the Creed bomb kill is like 
significantly faster than fighting Kraid normally. Um, but however, you have to go going to wait. get bombs is extremely slow right now. Yes. Um, I think theoretically there's a way that you could speed it up, but or at least speed it up somewhat uh, with pseudo wave, but I'm not certain of that. Yeah, because the... Also, is there a reason you didn't get the uh, Missile Plus tank after Varia? Did you not have enough health? Yeah, I was, I was concerned about health. That was the only reason. There's plenty of other Missile Plus tanks that I'll be able yeah, to get later on. Yeah, I'm not particularly on. worried about your missile count. It's, that's just always something free if your health is fine. It's a big deal, though. Yeah, because, again, it's the exponential health... Uh, decrease on the hell runs and that includes lava yeah. as well so yeah. it means that it's not quite as free as in other metroid games uh to like super metroid to just dip into lava to quickly get a missile tank yeah uh, i believe that E-Tanks is the magic number for that one, uh, but I am not at all confident. Uh, yeah, I'm so pretty... Yes, the fight here is pretty simple. Um, the first phase is just kind of blast missiles into his mouth until you get through it. Uh, if you get lucky with the attacks, like, he will actually just, like, give you attacks in such a way that you can just stand there and blast missiles. You don't have to actually aim anything. Hey, there's a boss counter cutscene. Yeah. All the, pretty much all the boss counter cutscenes are really epic, but you never get to see them in speedruns because they're slow, as previously mentioned. Yeah. Also, yeah. I actually think that this is one of the boss counter cutscenes that is viable in a speedrun because it saves you from dropping, having to drop back down otherwise which is slow too. Yeah, um, I mean- I'm not 100% sure of that. Yeah, I mean, you- Yeah, I mean, you can always avoid getting knocked down. I just made a mistake there and didn't react properly to, uh, breeds. Yeah, but I don't think you can avoid getting- Can you avoid getting knocked down on his- Yeah, you can without? count- You can counter yeah. and then just not shoot him. Uh, oh, true. That, and then just wait that. that, yeah. So that's what they do in speedruns, is they just wait out the timer before they shoot again. So. That's one of the fun things about making bingo goal lists, is that you can just make some of the goals things that are epic in the game that you wouldn't normally do in speedruns. For example, boss counter got seen. Uh, I think that the boss counter cutscenes are uh, such a cool part of the game. Um, as small of a part of the game as they are, uh, and I am like personally very disappointed that they're not fast. Um, they feel fast like casually because they're safe, which is a really interesting thing to think about. All right, so we're gonna come up on our first intended skip here. Uh, we're six. I you're just gonna go straight for grapple, right? Yeah. I assume. Yeah. So sixty four is gonna go straight to grapple beam here, uh, which is not the intended path. Uh, you're intended to do a bunch of like long loopy routing in Dairon here, and then like I think you're supposed to dip out to Berenia before you get grapple beam and go get speed booster, and then use speed booster and Artaria to do that. But uh, we don't need to do that. Uh, this game has something called coyote jumping, uh, which is a pretty common thing in platforms. But this game takes it kind of to the extreme, uh, where if you slide off of a ledge, uh, you can jump like significantly after the, like significantly after you've left the ledge. Uh, and in this scenario, you can use it to get a wall jump to land in a little slot there uh, and then morph ball and then morph across the area which I have just failed uh, 
You, you have to do it twice here because you have to do it on the other side as well. Yeah, how many deaths have I had? I think I've had two deaths. Is that two? Did you die to an enemy or something? Yeah, I died to an enemy once. Uh, yeah, luckily deaths in this game don't cost, like, as much time deaths as they are, would in other Metroid games. Are not nearly as punishing as they were in old, older Metroid games. Oh okay, yeah, that's another, like, checkpoint that I didn't mention earlier. Um, transports. All transports are a checkpoint as well. Lots of them. This if trick... You... Oh, sorry, please. Please explain. Uh, it is it is harder than it looks. Um, you have to get a fairly precise wall jump where you so you, you have to do a coyote jump, which is somewhat precise in of itself, um, and then get a pretty good wall jump off of it. And this isn't even the most precise part of the trick. Um, 64 is going to have to do another coyote jump later, uh, like right after this. Uh, that is a only one attempt. Uh, if he fails it, he is 100% dead. Uh, unlike failing this one, where he can um, crawl his way out of the lava to right. try again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like suddenly the top. Like normally, I'm. It looks like you're just like bonking your head on the ceiling. Yeah, it's really strange because normally. Yeah, okay, there we go. Normally, I don't fail that first one. Uh, yeah, the first one is the easier one. And as I uh, get the second one with no problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one is really tight because of the fact that, like, you're sliding with your head against the wall already, or the ceiling. So you have to, like, get just low enough that you can jump and not hit your head and fall down but not so low that you hit the slope and transition to your sliding animation, at which point you pretty much cannot, or you absolutely cannot jump to the side ledge, uh, but if you are fast enough, you can jump back to the original ledge. Okay, allow me to butt in real quick. Um, I'll be gone in a second. I just wanted to say uh, we're over the hour now. My hosting shift has come to an end, but please do not worry, everybody, because I will leave you to the more than capable hands of uh, Crumpet and Shadow Frost. Uh, they will be there hosting for you, and you will see, we will see each other again tonight. So have a good one. See ya. Thank you so much, Seth. And um, yes, we're... We're back, Shadow, Shadow Frost, and myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're we're here for the next three three or so hours, and we'll have a lot of fun. We have the Metroid Dread uh, run going on at the moment, and then we have some Near Automa and Monopoly on later, which will be very exciting. And I hope you've been enjoying the marathon since we last saw each other just a few few hours ago. And we had the Tears of the Kingdom run. That was that was exciting. I'm sure. I I wouldn't know. My head kind of hit the desk slightly beforehand, so I unfortunately did miss it. But yeah, we're back now. And um, yeah, so if the runners and commentators want to continue on, and I'll I'll um, I'll stay silent. I'll uh, let you carry on. So that that's a very short dip out of uh, Dire on there for grapple, but um, very nice to do. Um, this gives us a lot of extra mobility in the first trip to Berenia that will be coming up, and it also let it lets us skip just like a bunch of looping around trying to get to bombs uh, in in Dire on as well. Um, at this point, I'm not even sure that I could tell you how you're intended to get to bombs anymore. <laughs> um, because I just always do early grapple. There's like, unless you get like some really bizarre combination of goals that require you to do grapple at the normal time, which I'm not even sure you can get uh, <laughs> in the current uh, goal, like the current goal is. Um, there is literally no reason you would ever not do early grapple. That's just how strong of a 
uh, that, like, that's just how strong it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be able to skip, like, a vast majority of, uh, this, like, next Emmy section. Uh... Grapple is also just a really good mobility tool in general, um, because you can get, so the, the blue spider magnet panels, you can grapple to them, which makes for some really good opportunities to move really smoothly, um, because you can do that from a super far distance, um, and you move pretty fast when you grapple to them as well. You don't move quite as fast as, like, just running. I don't believe, but it is a very comparable speed, um, especially over short distances or if you need to get the height. And so you activate the second power generator in Dairon, and uh, for some reason it makes the room that we just went through into a cold room. Oh, well, it was a refrigerator, so the power was off, there was no refrigeration. These enemies it, have a weird counter timing. Yeah, I struggle with this section a lot, too. Um, yeah, so I'm activating my uh, second map station. Uh, which was the first one you did? Which was Catarus. Yeah, I, yeah I've, I forgot to grab the Artario one, but I'm pretty sure... I can grab another one yeah, you reasonably should be able to grab on path. One, no problem. Or even just grab the Artaria one later when we're cleaning up. So, yeah. And now we have more fall bombs. This is another thing that's really interesting about um, Dread is that more bombs are pretty late as well. Yeah, and yeah, so it is kind of interesting, like they're definitely used, but like kind of in different ways than they've been used in other Metroid games. Yeah. And so we have these, I mean, I guess these bomb launchers have technically been a thing in other Metroid games, but uh... I say what? Were there bomb launchers in Fusion? Yeah, that... I, Fusion's the Metroid game I'm least familiar with, so... Yeah, me too. I know Samus Returns had, uh... Or wait, I'm gonna... There's one more missile pack up Yeah, I was saying, are, are you gonna go... Are you gonna get this missile pack? I always forget about the missile pack in the other room to the left there. And now we get to go sh to Ver Ghost. go to Berenia, um, and where we will be getting uh, Flash Shift, which is one of the best items in the game, just our most fun items. Yeah, also one of the, yeah, like, the Best speed tech you can do with that with Flash Shift, like, I'll show some of it off, but, like... It's insane. Yeah, if you look... Flash Shift is such a fun item, and it is such a good speedrun item. It's, like, peak game design for a Metroid game. It's also really, like, mechanically interesting from, like, a Metroidvania lock and key standpoint. Because you would think, oh, like, a little, like, short-range teleport like that? How does that lock anything? But, like, the, the shutter locks are, re like, really cool because you just, like, teleport over them and don't trigger the pressure plate. Which, like... Yeah, it's pretty basic. It's just really cool to see it actually, like, play out. Yeah, so right there, you've, so right here, there's two examples already of Grapple saving a ton of time in Berenia. Like, 
uh, with that one grapple block, I was able to kill, like, skipped, like, most of that room, and then I'm also able to uh, parry that one enemy that normally, like, shoots a laser and blocks your path. Yeah, that, that grapple block probably saves a solid 40 to, second, 40 to 60 seconds at minimum. It's probably more than that, actually, because that section is really annoying. Because you have the... Uh, the plants that suck you in all over the place there. And you can get this missile pack, which... I guess you can get this missile pack with, even without it, but... Yeah. There's an energy it's tank coming up faster. that I think you're thinking of. Yeah. The energy tank. I guess you can get the energy tank with flash it. Yeah. But I guess you wouldn't come back this way necessarily. But yeah, because you can just grapple onto that. You've picked up three tanks now, right? Yeah. Uh, I have you not... Do you have any E parts? No. Or I am... Interesting. Have... Yeah, I'm not... I don't think there are either. I'm going to assume that we're not going to get to Hanubia in two hours. Yeah, probably not. Especially with some of these other goals that you could be doing instead. So we're probably not going to see the Anubia missile tanks or 100% in Perenia. Yeah. Which I guess also means all transports is probably out. Um, yeah, because one of them is uh, Anubia to... Oh, Interash, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't even thinking that. I was just thinking to Anubia in the first place. And I guess one miner from each is out as well. Um, I guess... Depending on where we're at when we get to Deep Gavorn, you might be able to push into Hanubia to, ju like, do early cross bombs and just push into Hanubia. To yeah, get but that still requires screw thing. attack. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about it requiring screw attack. Yeah, it requires screw attack from both directions, right? Yeah. And then another thing that... I really wish the, the early screw attack method was not, like, quadruple frame perfect. Yeah, but, uh... So yeah, so for people who are not familiar with this game, um... Screw attack is in a really annoying place uh, because when you pick up screw attack, you are locked into a scripted sequence of the game because you can't backtrack. And entering the elevator from Berenia to Artaria is a uh, like starts the frozen Artaria sequence, which forces you to go through frozen Artaria. And then Frozen Catarist to defeat Experiment Z57. Uh, and there is no way around that. But uh, Screw Attack is required to access the deepest parts of the game, which makes it a really, really long detour to just get Screw Attack. Uh, however, there is a relatively new trick that you can use to get it uh, to do early Screw Attack with, like, I forget how it, what, uh, what it's called, uh, but basically you uh, frame, like you map, like you pause buffer using the map, it, uh, flash shift inputs in such a way that you can use flash shift to charge speed booster while effectively charge speed booster while moving in reverse. Uh, Basically, what you do is you charge the speed booster moving forward and then flash shift back and continue moving forward without losing your uh, speed booster charge. 
so that you can carry a speed booster charge to break some speed blocks that you would otherwise be unable to break. And it is, like, many in frame-perfect inputs. Um, not to mention the pause buffering, uh, which is quite difficult to do, as far as I'm aware. Um, it is the optimal way to do a speedrun of the game, currently. Uh, but it is extremely difficult. As long as power bombs are a requirement for bingo goals, uh, that trick will probably be a requirement to do bingo, which is not great. Uh, and obviously this is a early draft of the goal list. Um, 64, please don't die. You say that literally... Uh, the Um, yeah, I entered this with fairly low health, so uh, this is kind of... Fortunately, all the future central units that we do here uh, after this one will be for basically free. Yeah, I mean... Try and recover health from... Uh... Imagine not using the turbo. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing, like, that we didn't talk about, because it's not really that important, but, um, Turbo is allowed in drag speedrunning up to 12 hertz, is that right? Is it 12 hertz? Yeah, I believe it's 12. Yeah. Um, because mashing is the optimal way to deal damage in this game. Um, and it is difficult to mash optimally, first of all, because mashing is hard. And second of all, uh, mashing is painful for a lot of people. That was a close encounter for what, by the way, 64. Yeah. If you miss this next one, you better just parry. Because you still need to do another parry. Yeah, I... I'll have... I'll parry the uh, ice enemy. Are you going to do water bomb jump? Yes. Because there is a goal for uh, ice missiles without spin boost. Oh, yeah. That's the only note. I think that's the only um, NMG goal we have enabled, isn't it? I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, it can be done glitchlessly too, but I'm going to do the water bomb jump method because it's easier. The glitchless method requires charging a shine spark uh, through a uh, or through an emmy zone while the emmy is there. So, uh, uh we, we just saw 64 do a cutscene skip by uh, shine sparking while more. Normally, if you just shine, and there's a bunch of places where if you shine spark up, you get a cutscene. Uh, that is one of them. And the cutscene is cool. Uh, and there is a goal relating to cutscene, or shine spark cutscenes, but it's not on the board. Um, but if you do so while morphed, you do not get the cutscene. For whatever reason. I don't question things anymore. I have learned my lesson about questioning things from video games. Alright, and we are off to Ferenia where we will be defeating our first Chozo robot. Yeah, and we have defeat four Chozo robots, which is all four of the Chozo robot encounters. Uh, well, there's more than four. Well, there's the two single ones and the two double ones. I presume... It's, when you wrote it's the dub, the double counts as two. Okay, so that's how the. Otherwise, it would be all Chozo robots. Okay, so in that case, Cause I because you could do three as a one and a two was the intention. So there's a goal for three.
Unfortunately, we will not get the lore from Quiet Road. We will also, that I guess that also means we will not see Quiet Road get murdered in cold blood. Also, this Chozo warrior is hilarious, or Chozo robot is hilarious, because you just shine spark into him a bunch and he's dead. I guess you can do that to all the Chozo robots, but... I remember struggling so hard on this fight casually, and then now it's just boop, boop, gone. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah, these were really tough fights casually. Same with the Chozo uh, Warriors, but they were so satisfying to get once. Now that's a pretty free Missile Plus tank if you can get the Six Shine Spark trick. Yeah, 64 demonstrating the ability to Shine Spark diagonally. And diagonally downwards. Yeah. I think this might. I think this is the first I, I think this game is where the you, only game where you can Shine Spark diagonally downwards. Or just flat out downwards. Yeah, and there are a couple downwards. puzzles where you do have to. Well, that was one of them, but there's a, at least one where you have to shine spark straight downwards. Yeah, this game has some of the best speed booster and shine sparking mechanics, and also some of the most infuriating shine spark puzzles as a result. And it is so good as because of that. Yeah, because I don't even think we even talked about like the Shine Spark puzzle that I did like when I first got Speed Booster. Oh yeah, the... Yeah, so okay, so, so thinking about how Speed Booster works. Um, so the basics of speed booster are you click the left stick and you run fast. Uh, you gradually build up speed until you reach top speed. Once you're at top speed, you can press down to store, to store a shine spark, uh, which will last for some period of time. Uh, while you have a shine spark stored, you can press B to release it and then tell it what direction you want to release it in. Um, while you are running with speed booster at top speed only, I believe you can break speed blocks. Um, and uh, you can also break speed blocks with shine with a shine spark. Uh, if you shine spark into a slope, you will convert your shine spark into run speed and run be able to run up said slope. Uh, which is relevant for some puzzles. Um, there's a, I believe you can can serve Shine Spark momentum or speed momentum through slot. Oh yeah, you you carry speed momentum through wall jumps and uh, slides as well. Uh, I think that's really about it. Um, yeah. You can Shine Spark either in Morph or on Morphed form. Uh, there are puzzles that require you to Morph while, you, or Shine Spark while Morphed, which is really cool. Um, is this the only game that you can Shine Spark while Morph? I'm pretty sure Zero you, Mission you can. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about Zero Mission. Would not surprise me if that was the case. Alright, so now we are back in Berenia and we will be going to fight Dragiga, which, uh, if you have any experience with other, um... Yeah, is there a, a all-bosses goal? Like, I don't... I guess you can just skip Dragiga, yeah. That's what I'm planning on doing, because that is the one, uh, boss that yeah, we get to it. skip, uh, yeah. in NMG. Thanks to a trick called Pseudo Wave, uh, which I will be going for. Yeah. It's a little so bit tricky, but uh, yeah, 
Not too bad. At least this so, instance. So, wait, wave beam is an item that lets you shoot through walls. Um, it's a very powerful item and it is a very late item in Metroid Dread. Um, but you can do a trick with charge beam, or not even charge beam. You don't even need charge beam. Um, uh, you can do a trick without wave beam called a pseudo wave, uh, where you can get your shot to go through walls by having your arm cannon enter like wall collision in a very specific way. Uh, the one that 64 is going to do here is a is a turnaround pseudo wave, where he's going to charge. I believe he's going to charge a charge beam shot. Um, and then turn around and release the charge beam during the turnaround animation. Yeah. Which will cause it to shoot within the wall before Samus gets like pushed out of the wall fully outside of the turnaround animation. Oh, you're, you're gonna do the, the, yeah, the slide version. That's right. Sliding is the key to. Um, Pseudo wave typically, because for whatever reason, when you slide, you can slide in, like, you slide kind of into wall collision. Um, I think sliding changes your hitbox in some specific way. I don't know what the actual, like, way it changes your hitbox is. But. Is this section not have be is this section not filled with water because Jagiga's not yep dead? it makes getting that missile from like infuriating the that. free that's hilarious i did not know that alter there is an alternative way that you can get that um when the water is up uh you so there's two ways you can get the water up that missile pack without gravity suit uh, you can do a trick called a water bomb jump, which we'll talk about in a few minutes because 6-4 is going to actually do one. Um, or you can charge a shine spark from the save room and then just carry it over and shine spark out of the water, which is hilarious to see done. Yeah. My, yeah, that's what my uh, glitchless hundo run did. Uh... But yeah. Uh. All right, so now we are in Gavorin, and Gavorin has a lot of gold on this board. Um, we have Destroy Six Ankies, we have Ice Missiles without Spin Boost, um, we have five Missile Packs, we have the Missile Plus Tank, we have the Power Bomb Tank. I forgot that you can do a Shine Spark to get that Missile Pack. Uh, Givorin is also a really annoying area because it is full of one-way doors. Um, okay, well, Sigurd this is, is going to be... Up on his second Chozo robot fight here. Um, and he's going to try to charge a Shine Spark up through that door. Uh, that door has a loading gate behind it which makes it very difficult sometimes to get the Shine Spark to charge if to do it in, like, just the right way. Uh, I... Yeah, I entered this fight with relatively low health, which is, uh... uh you were doing so good, too, though. Yeah, it's... Yeah, unfortunately, there isn't really a good way for me to farm health here, so it's just... Have to not get hit. Just don't die, forehead. Yeah, the, the Shine Spark at the beginning of the fight makes this fight a lot easier. And... So... Unfortunately, this is going to be a relatively slow fight because I have to just be so careful. I mean, the Shine Spark probably did close to half the robot's health. So. Yeah. 
Uh, high I didn't even see the shot that killed you. I'm gonna watch the instant replay on the screen. And you were so close too, he was dead. Wait, what? Oh, I guess I def I guess I defeated it. I was like so confused because I thought I would have, like I thought, I guess I both died and defeated it. So the game counted it as, uh... huh. <laughs> let's chalk that up as a, that hasn't happened before moment. I have never seen that before. Like, if you wonder why I was, like, going back and forth between the rooms, I was, like, because I was just super confused. Yeah, and, and there's that weird thing where, like, the room is not the same. Like, the room connection is not the same after you defeat the... Like, that room just, like, disappears after you defeat the... Well, no, it's right? there. It's just that, uh... It's just that it looks very similar to the to the previous room. Oh, right, yeah, that's right. That's kind it of... It looks very similar to the room before it. I have made this mistake prior to this, this moment, and you would think I would have learned from making the mistake last time, but... Uh, spoiler alert, I do not learn from my mistakes. Um... <laughs> So yeah, so Sigma was pretty much just going through Gavorin here to search out the super missiles, which will allow him to break some more door covers here in Gavorin. Um, and, like, I know we said that, like, Varia is where things really open up, but this is one of the points that things really, really open up. Um, and this is the point where you can start doing all kinds of skips, intended or otherwise, um, with with or without glitches. Um, typically, after super missiles, you would work towards getting the uh, the spin boost, which is uh, the double jump in this game. Um, but we don't need it. Um, 64 is going to do a trick called a water bomb jump, which is going to skip the only place where uh, it, the usage of spin booster is otherwise required. Um, actually, he's not going to do that right now, because you're going to go do the X, right? First. Yeah. Also going to uh, attempt to IBJ up to... Uh, but there was a trick I kind of... Why not out. just giant spark up to it? If you want to do IBJ. I'll make one more attempt Can at the end. you not just IBJ into the slot and then go over? Like, move over rather than trying to onboard. There you go. Very nice. Yeah, so that's a goal when I, uh... I'll probably when I hit the, uh, transport to, uh... You know, I'll have a chance to... And that right that. there is why that is a goal. Not just, uh, the, the, it fits the pattern, like, a lot of the Missile Plus tanks individually are goals, um, but the, this one is really cool because there's, like, three different ways that you could get it. You could get it with a Shine Spark, you could get it with IBJ, uh, which stands for infinite bomb jumping. You can also just, like, get it the intended way with either Spin Boost or Space Jump, which, why, but why would you do that intended strats are for the uncool kids i guess <laughs> i i really just didn't have a have a finish to that quip <laughs> ready at all all right so now we are in uh a loon which is a very small area of the game yeah, but also has some very important story progression here. Yeah, and a goal. Um, yeah. Which maybe shouldn't be a goal, 
in the end, but again, first draft of the goal list. Um, so, in terms of story, uh, this is where the X Parasites were locked up, um, and releasing them is a requirement to uh, advance the game. Mostly because you need Plasma Beam, and to, to obtain Plasma Beam, you have to release the X. Uh, this kind of one enemy enemy here is really obnoxious for obtaining a missile pack that's here that you need to do a shine spark for and it just gets in the way uh you're doing pretty good on missiles actually yeah especially if you potentially go back for the uh plus tank in artaria yeah, I don't I've... know if you're planning on doing that. Yeah, that I'm not. I guess you can not... get 12 missiles out of that now because you go back with supers and you'd be able to do the super missile lock one as well. Yeah, I'll kind of see where I'm at with missile count after Frozen Artaria. Uh... And suddenly this room is that what that had nothing in it earlier is full of enemies, and I always forget about this room, so I, like, flash shift straight into an enemy. <laughs> so I make sure to fully... There is actually a, a goal on the goal list that we just aren't playing with currently, uh, where you can have the X kill Kraid instead of killing him yourself, which is a fun goal, uh, but it requires glitches to do so. It requires just pseudo right? I think so. Yeah, this is and the first Chozo warrior fight. Uh, and this These is are where the like, boss fight. Like, it, it's hard to call them bosses, really. Uh, but they do kind of showcase your growth throughout the game. Because, like, while they scale, they scale slower than Samus scales, effectively. So, like, you are, you get stronger than they, than them, and it feels really good to wail on them later in the game. Like the one in Frozen Artaria. Which is the one that I assume is going to be 64 second, uh... Joker yeah. Warriors, I don't... He, he could do the one by the spin boost pickup, but there's no reason to pick up spin boost in this seed. In fact, it would be a actively bad idea to do so. All right, that's another goal, right? Five yep. E -tanks. Yeah, that and release the X. Yeah. So, really good uh, Alune here for 64 with this board. Yeah, there's no, like, X power bombs on this board, or I would have gone for the Alune power bomb. Uh, yeah. and then... Aluna is... The Alune power bomb is, like, one of the pow like power bomb tanks that I think almost everyone got casually before getting power bombs. Like, everyone I've talked to all did. Um, yeah, because the game... Yeah, so now we're just... Oh, yeah, because the game kind of like really makes it obvious that there's like a passage up there. Yeah, there's also the one right by the grapple beam, the elevator after grapple beam, which I don't know how I missed that one casually first, like, like, at, like looking at it in hindsight. But all right, so now we're back in Gavor and it's just going to be a bunch of backtracking here. Uh, but since we're first going to do a shine spark to grab a missile pack here. That just might be an opportune moment for Shadow and myself to jump in here, um, just to remind any, or just to t tell any new viewers really, um, what we're what we're raising money for here um, during Bingothon's fifth anniversary. Um, so Bingothon has raised over thirteen thousand dollars for the Fred Hutch charity in over the past three years, all going towards life-saving research, treatments, and patient care as well as helping over 80,000 people receiving COVID-19 vaccinations um, in the last couple of years. 
Furthermore, this is helping Fred Hutch to unlock how cancers and infectious diseases start and spread, harnessing the immune system to fight diseases and working to make treatment more equitable and accessible for more people. Can we make $15,000 raised in total for them? I believe we're very close, if not already there. Um, I think so as well. I think we just needed slightly more for that. And uh, in case you want any more incentive for that, we got a bunch of cool prizes that you will be out for if you donate, for example, the Bingo Sun mugs. Either a special 5th anniversary edition mug, uh, which you will be eligible for to win well, if you donate $10 or more throughout the event, or the neutral Bingo Sun mug, uh, which will only require a $5 donation to be eligible for. Seems like a pretty good deal. And exactly. you're helping charity. Win win. And we have a few upcoming goals and bid wars. Um, we have the Final Fantasy V Career Day, where they will be defeating a portal boss. If we get another $85 towards that, which would be really, really cool to see. Um, it'll, be, um, it'll be an interesting interesting modifier to the, to the run. And then we also have the Final Fantasy V Career Day, where um, you get to name the... the Art. You get to name the character, and currently Floha is in the lead for that bid war at five dollars. But you know, even six dollars, you know, you can get to choose that at the moment. And you know, of course, we'd also like to thank our sponsor, Team Seventeen, for sponsoring BingoCon Winter 2023 and for their continued support over the last few years. They've been huge help, and you know, this really wouldn't be possible without them. So a huge shout out to them. And yeah, so we'll let the runners get back to it, and thank you. Okay, well that's another goal. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so a lot just happened in somewhat quick succession there. So C4 did a glitch called a water bomb jump, where essentially by... Um, um, by getting bombed off the ground and unmorphing before touching the ground, the game sort of loses track of the fact that he is underwater, uh, because the game doesn't allow you to bomb jump out of water in a sort of weird way. I don't know all the, the intense uh, inner workings of, of it. Um, but the basic gist is that it, it tries to prevent you from bomb jumping out of water, uh, but by unmorphing underwater after having been bounced upward by a bomb, he kind of loses track of that. Um, and then by placing a bomb mid-air, morphing mid-air and then placing a bomb and then unmorphing and then morphing again and getting bomb blasted up by that, you can ledge grab out of the water there and skip the use of spin boost. Uh, and then he parried an Emmy to get his third Emmy parry. And then he stored a Shine Spark into the central unit fight. Um, which basically skips the first phase of the fight. Uh, and then he also failed the optimal strats for the Emmy, but we won't talk about that. And then we're all caught up. Yeah. Alright, so Ice Missiles will enable 64 to destroy Ankies, which are the little, like, flamey plants. I don't really know why they're called Ankies, that's just their name, I suppose. Actually, I've destroyed one of, and, uh, I don't really need to- How did you destroy that one through the enemy? Did you just, like, get it over the top of the hitbox? Must have. That was weird. That's two. Yeah, so... And then there's a fifth one here. Okay, he's gotta go find his sixth. I think there's nine total in Gavorn. Is that the number we said? Yeah. Alright, so now 64's got options. 
He could go there six. Okay, we probably need to change that number to seven. Yeah. But, uh, that's besides the point. All right, so he, he's got options now. He can, um, oh, maybe even eight. I don't know. Um, yeah. He can go get cross bombs. He can, uh, what else can he do? He can do a lot of things, and I'm totally blanking on them. Uh, cross bombs are the last item in the game, but through the use of speed booster here to be uh, shine spark up a uh, slope, he can actually go to the area where it is now, um, which is why early uh, screw attack would be super strong here, uh, because he'd actually be able to follow up afterwards and go to. Uh, Anubia. There you go. Okay, let's try to not fail the counter this time. Yeah, so the reason I'm countering all these I boss idors is because it gives you basically a full refill. That's the best way to defeat yeah. them, straight up. I also screwed up. Uh... This is gonna be slow. The wrong time. Yeah, because you have to like do the shine spark like before this enemy like fully. Transforms into the final phase. Yeah. You just did it in between the wrong phases, which is fine. you do that like you just morph and spark under it yeah uh yeah unfortunately weirdest boss in the game for some reason i really don't understand what this boss was like trying to be i i understood the progression from like the first enemy that you parried in the game to the really big version of it that we saw a bunch here to this version, but that's about as about it. And sixty-four times. Yeah, un unfortunately, like this, like this is one of those cases where like not having a uh, sp spin booster space jump does kind of hurt a little bit. Yeah, he sixty-four could go get space jump right now. Yeah. Our, okay, I screwed up. Okay. He can also get uh, he can also go get storm missiles, he can go get gravity suit. Oh, I... Uh, although he does need space jump to go get gravity suit. He can get gravity and space uh, screw attack, for that matter. Yeah. Let's tr third time's the charm. Hopefully. Uh, just to, like just a reminder that this is supposed to be the final, non-final boss of the game. Uh, I I guess you have all of the new games. But, like this is the boss that gives you the last. Really, re like the last real major item of the game. Like I, I say that like power bombs isn't a real major item, but okay, that's how you're supposed to handle that one attack. Uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting it to. Uh, really yeah, to basically get it so that the the cross bomb. Thing here, uh, like spawns above you, so that you can just be safe on the ground. Uh, yeah, normally you would just space jump and stay up. Um, so 
We don't have the item, therefore we can't do the thing the item is to tell us what let us do it. Who would have thought? Um, Gozuna does have surprisingly low health, though, for a boss in the end, at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Also can be kind of annoying when it decides to just turn around instantly. Okay, there we go. Now we just have the Corex to deal with, which, as long as I just keep health... As long as I keep pelting missiles at it, then it should stay, stay away up. from me. Yeah. So cross bombs just makes things a little easier. Yeah, cross bombs are really nice. They make they they make for free bomb jumping if that comes up again. I don't think it will. Um, There's also a couple of places where cross bombs are required for puzzles to get items, uh, but those are pretty few and far between in the end. Oops. Yeah, um, they can also be a little bit finicky. Uh, yeah. As you just saw. Uh, those blocks right above where CC4 just was is uh, are the screw attack blocks of shame they they bring shame to the to everything because they are the reason that we would need uh, a screw attack in order to uh, do much or in order to move on to Anubia. Are you going straight for gravity seat without a... Oh, you're just going to do the speed boosters, right? right. Yeah. Yes. Lizzy is going to do a really, really cool Shine Spark puzzle here. Uh, it is probably the hardest one in the game. It's the longest one. I don't know if it's the hardest. It requires the most correct inputs to execute. Don't forget to check off Six at some point. Yeah, right. Oh. I forgot there was an Anki here. There's two. Okay, there's more than two. There's three. God. How many regular missile packs in Gaboran have you gotten? Three, I think. That sounds good. Alright, so yeah, that's the first part of the speed booster puzzle is to clear out those speed booster blocks. And now we come to the fun part. Yes, which I already uh am uh Botched. Yeah. Yeah, it requires diagonal inputs, which for shine sparks can sometimes be kind of good. Yeah, it's kinda of the one I feel like thing the about diagonal shine spark um analog window is really small. Compared to the horizontal one. There we go. Such a slick puzzle when it's done right. Yeah. It also allows you to obtain gravity suit without a um, without a jump modifier. Unfortunately, obtaining Gravity Suit here does lock 64 into doing Frozen Artaria and therefore getting Speed Booster, not Speed Booster, Screw Attack, uh, which is going to take a pretty long time. Um, I don't know how much time for other goals we are going to have after this. We have... Uh, 23-ish minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, I can probably just clean up missiles in... Oh, yeah, you, uh, you should be able to hit 125 or 150. Yeah, I need to charge a Shine Spark here. 
So ordinarily you just space jump up, but uh, since I skipped that item... Interestingly enough, oh no, Adam's not wait. Yeah, Adam's waiting to talk here. Adam is waiting to talk here yet, which is interesting. Although he doesn't talk about like that's not his normal text at that network station, is it? No, I think it is because I think he always says that the planet's rapidly cooling, like that. Oh, did he? I didn't see that text box. Yeah, that's correct. I think there, there's one in Ferenia that we skip by getting this one. Because uh, in the game's intended progression, you're supposed to have space jump and storm missiles before heading here. And the game taunts you with a bunch of things you can't get yet. Uh, Hey, you probably could have gotten that missile pack, couldn't you, Adam? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So... Alright, okay, so 64 is going to come up on his second Chozo Warrior fight here. Which is going to bring him, like... Like, after that, he's going to be... So close to... Bingo in so many lines. Which I think just, uh demonstrates the uh, power of the SRL V5 bingo sync generator. And I guess it means that we've pretty accurately assessed the difficulty of the goals. Oh. I did not correctly anticipate which attack he was going to do. Yeah, these are the fights where you really have to mash or use turbo. I mean, anywhere that you can deal damage with beam, beam is optimal as long as you can match somewhat well. Also, I can't believe you still haven't gotten a second unique boss counter cutscene, although I guess you'll probably get one in Z57, is my guess. Yeah. I still need to mark, I think, the Anki's goal. Yeah, you do. Uh, Although you also did just get 125 missiles, so... Now I'll just, uh... 64 probably will get a bingo in this one. He will probably get, uh, top left, bottom... The top left to bottom right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think, like, what else we could talk about uh, on Bingo here while you run through this. Um, would Metroid Dread uh, have a big Bingo community? Like, would it be a big thing, or would it just kind of be in, in its infancy now, or...? It's, it's in its infancy right now. Um, 64 and I basically put this together on our own for this. Um, there is There was a small contingent of people a while back who were putting something together with it. Um, but they basically came up with a list of 25 goals and you had to do like major glitches to collect all 25. Um, which is why we kind of just started fresh. I see. Well, props to you, because it seems like, from watching it here, it seems like it is very balanced. Um, yeah, we yeah, spent a lot of time on goals and trying to get it balanced. Um, it, the, it still needs a lot of fine-tuning and a lot of... Um, it needs a lot more goals, too. Um, 
what we're using the SRLV5 where you uh, sort everything into like 25 categories of difficulty um, and we have an average of four per difficulty which is really low and you see it makes you see a lot of repeat boards essentially um, but infancy stages but it's a really good start um, and I, I do want to see it continue to grow in the future I'm sure it will because you've done a very good job of showcasing it here today. Um, I know I ha I know basically nothing about Metroid Dread, but I've just been glued to my screen for the past hour and three quarters, just, you know, watching it. And it's it, it, it's a fantastic game. Like it, lo it looks really good, and you know, the skill demonstrated by 64 here is quite incredible. Um, I'm well impressed anyway. Yeah, so, are you, how many lines do you think you'll get? Because I'm seeing a few that are quite close to completion. The diagonals it's, in particular. It's probably going to just be the top left, bottom right diagonal that gets completed. Um, the other lines that are not finished at the moment are, are the ones that have some of the really extreme uh, ends of the goal spectrum in them. Uh, one miner from each region looks or is a lot more difficult than it looks and sounds uh, because of requiring you to go to Anubia. 100%ing um, a region also almost always requires going to Anubia. Um, and Anubia is a very, very late game piece. Um, that's the same thing with all transporters. Um, all TPs would be probably doable with a little bit more time, but definitely not in the time constraint here. Um, so yeah, it's probably just going to be top left, bottom right, because we're kind of on a rail now. Okay. Well, you, you've certainly got quite a few of the goals completed on the board. You know, it's more green than it is black, which is always good, yeah. you know? It's, you definitely got uh, more goals than I was initially expecting. This this was a really nice board. Yeah. Um, and it's really showed off the, the game's bingo potential as well. Yeah. And hopefully after today more people will be interested in um, in running running bingo Metroid Dread. Hopefully. Oh. Yeah. Alright, so 64 is now headed off to another big cinematic boss fight here um yeah this is personally one of my favorite boss fights in the game yeah um, same i will see how it goes like i going in without like spin booster space jump so yeah without uh, space jump this boss fight is very difficult or it can be uh, if you know what you're doing uh it's not Something that's really interesting about this fight in particular is that uh, there are a quite a few situations where Flash Shift makes a pretty good substitution for Space Jump or Spin Boost. Uh, because uh, it gives you the it gives you the horizontal moment uh, movement that you need. The one big problem that 64 is gonna have here is he does not have uh, screw attack or storm missiles here for that section. And he also does not have the verticality to do the really fast strats here in this section, where normally you would charge up a shine spark and... Oh, actually he might. Yeah, no, I was, I... Yeah, I tried for that and... I was saying, I didn't think that would work because yeah. usually you have to hold your speed with your charge and go that in a second and then... Yeah, I've gotten it before, but... Yeah, I just, uh... Yeah. Didn't quite get it that time. 64 is... There we are. He's, he's looking for a specific attack sequence. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, I'm not really getting the attack that I want. And this might be really bad, because without, like, a jump ability, I can't dodge all of these, uh... So I'm gonna be taking a I bunch of damage. I thought you were gonna try and go for the, uh, the, the counter cutscene. Yeah, well... Yeah, I didn't really get the parry window there, and yeah, I just got some yeah, really you, you, unfortunate you, attacks. Yeah, you got a pretty bad pattern here. And it's the and his swipe pattern that middle swipe without having without a without a, a jump ability. Like can't yeah. Yeah. So sixty worth really uh, opening and praying here that he gets the attack that gives him his parry window. Uh, pretty much as often as possible because it is free damage. And that which and it would this is the attack. And this is also just a really epic parry cutscene. This is probably the most epic parry cutscene in the entire game. I would agree. And this is just like, I'm gonna stay here. And Experiment D57 is like, uh, no you're not, I'm gonna try and get rid of you. So yeah, uh, this section you're intended to use storm missiles, like that attack you're intended to use storm missiles for, um, but obviously we don't have storm missiles. You can also use screw attack, that's where I was going. Uh, which is typically what runs will use there. Although it does depend on the route. Yeah, it's 60 boys dead again. Yeah, this is just really unfortunate. Um, not having a vertical ability here. Um, personally, I do my best to never have to enter this fight without a vertical ability. Um, yeah. Also, just getting swipes right off the bat is pretty much getting swipes at all is bad RNG because it's just time that you that he is not vulnerable to damage at all. Yeah, bad RNG. Yeah, I guess that's actually a really unfortunate uh, piece of this board is that there's zero incentive to, to get um, space jump or spin or space jump or spin boost or storm missiles uh, because there is no incentive to like do late like the like perennial two segment or. Uh, 64 could have just picked up spin boost. Yeah. Which is a decision I'm definitely is, regretting now. Hindsight is 2020, of course. Uh, Flappy Bird is making him pay. Yeah, and then he I did he the was... uh, swipe attack again. Yeah. 
Yeah, so unfortunately, I'm getting kind of stuck here by... And that. there's no way out of this. I don't, no, you can go get Screw Attack. If Technically, yeah. Uh, that wouldn't help, though. It wouldn't help with that one attack. It would maybe make me able to prevent him from, like, healing off the wall generators, yeah. oh, but yeah, it wouldn't that, help with. Uh, that, the attack where he, like, sticks out, like, five tentacles and charges up, uh, he is actually healing during that. I don't know if there's ever been an instance of Metroid bosses healing in the past, but... We are. Honestly, that was probably pretty ideal timing to get this because that was probably pretty close to triggering his recharge phase. Yeah. And so, so something about boss counter cutscenes is that. Bosses cannot transition phases while they are in a boss counter cutscene. So it is ideal, technically, to set up the boss in such a way that when you do the counter, you are, um, like, you are basically, like, on the last possible amount of health that you could have, have them be on. Did the player have more items to make the boss easier to beat, or...? Yes, normally you would have... Pot? You would have Space Jump here, which gives you infinite verticality. Which makes this fight much easier. Yeah, and um, that one attack that keeps killing me, yeah, I would the, be able the to... The double swipe is practically... Or the triple the swipe point. is the, yeah, the last yeah, the, part of that. Where he swiped with both claws. The last piece of that is uh, practically unavoidable without either space jump or spin boost. The, the um, counter cutscene definitely looked absolutely amazing. It was really, really cool. I'm trying to think if there was if there's any other goals that you would have done to spend here, like instead of pushing into this. You probably could have gotten five missiles from Devorin, but really who cares? How much about that one? Um, You probably, yeah, I don't know that you could have unlocked those either. I guess if you went into Ferenia for Storm and or Space Jump, you probably could have. I guess you have, cro you've got cross bombs, so getting Space Jump would not have been that smart. I forgot that you did get cross bombs already. you could have done the uh, easier version of the bomb jump. Easier TM. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so close. 
Yeah, I guess we got one more attempt at this fight, uh... Yeah. Before... After this, it's pretty much mercy kill time. Yeah. Because I have definitely beaten this boss without, uh... Without having a uh, jump upgrade before, but I think in those cases I managed to get the shine spark off, and the shine spark kills him instantly. It, which, yeah, I don't know how to do the shine spark either. Just take this time to um, you know, give a brief shout out to our sponsors over at Team 17 for helping make this possible. As they uh, they just they um, apologies, my English isn't Englishing, but um, thank thank you to Team 17 for sponsoring Bingo Fun Winter 2023 and for their continued support over the past few years. You know. They make this marathon possible, and you know, big, big thank you to them. And in case you didn't know, Bingothon is raising money for Fred Hutch during the marathon. Bingothon has raised over thirteen thousand dollars for Fred Hutch over the past three years, all going towards life-saving research, treatments, and patient care, as well as helping over eighty thousand people receiving COVID-19 vaccines at Fred Hutch in the last couple of years. Furthermore, this is helping Fred Hutch unlock how cancers and infectious diseases start and spread, harnessing the immune system to fight diseases, and working to make treatment more equitable and accessible for more people. Can we make it to $15,000 raised in total for them? We're nearly there. And just to remind you of a couple upcoming Bit Wars and Goals, the Final Fantasy V Career Day. Um, if we get $85 towards that, then the players will have to defeat the Portal Bots. And if you sub if you donate six dollars, you can donate it towards the Final Fantasy V Career Day uh, Bart's name bit war, where you can choose the name of the character. And if you donate a total of ten dollars throughout the marathon, you're entered into a giveaway for a Bingothon mug, the fifth anniversary edition. And if you donate five dollars, you're entered into a giveaway for the Bingothon neutral mug. And with that, it looks like we our time with Metroid Dread has come to an end. And thank you so, so much to the uh, runner and commentator, CJS07 and 64-bit link. And how do you think the run went overall? I mean, I'm pr pretty happy with it, uh, apart from uh, the ending with Experiment, but at least I beat it within the two hour. So yeah, you got it at the last second there. <laughs> so brilliant. Well, <clears throat> we'll go into just a short intermission now while we get the next run set up. And up next is the near Automa run. It's a two v two lockout bingo, um, and we're really, really excited to see that. So we'll be back in just a few minutes.
Peggy 7. It is $14 from Pink Batman 12 saying, Can't wait for CJ to check the house and the cow. House and house cow. And cow. <laughs> <laughs> is that just what we started saying now? Um, I just want to give a huge shout out to one of the goals on the top right. See a cow to house. Housing cow. Housing cow. Housing cow. Well, I think it has the right color. It has the right color, at least. But it is not the animal you're looking for. Hey, you. Do you like chaos? Well, did you know you can suggest any goal for the generic bingo at the end of the marathon simply by writing it down in a donation comment? Type exclamation mark donate in chat to make one pink Batman scream in terror and let chaos lose for the finale. <laughs> <laughs> Here is kind of open worldish. So, how does this figure into the bingo in itself? Okay, so the open world nature of Nier, it is kind of story gated. A lot of the quests you do have to prioritize taking some story progress to unlock them. Some of them are quite late into the bingo. But when we made the original bingo goals for Nier, we decided to have a mix between quests and the weapons, and then some alternative goals that wouldn't necessarily need any story progress. You could rush off, do them, and then get back on the story, but that would leave you behind another player who was focusing on the later game goals. So it created a lot of interesting decisions that you usually wouldn't find in a lot of games.
And we are back, so while we wait for the Nier Automna run to get up and running, um, myself and my co-host here, Shadow Frost, will be playing a quick game. Um, we were discussing it during the intermission and we see that Lunk, the green guy, will get us our first bingo on the host bingo board. Um, so Lunk, the green guy, what we do is we describe a story or a character, but in the worst way possible. Um, so we'll be doing that for a little while until the, the runners can get in here and start entertaining you. Um, what would you like to go first, Shadow? Uh, oh boy, already putting me on the spot. All right, all right. <laughs> I do have one. I did have one in mind, and I hope I can describe it as badly as I can. So we have this person over here, right? And uh, he's uh, he works in utilities. Uh, he's like a very hard worker, but you know, he's kind of not always in like, he isn't like the most prominent person there. And uh, overall, he's a bit of a, a, a scary cat and he's kind of, you know, relies too much on other people, I would think, uh, especially his brother, uh, because his brother always takes the spotlight. But overall, he he's like a lucky guy because he seems to win like, sometimes wins like properties and stuff. Uh, but and then again, he gets a bit unlucky because you know the the the, the, you, the properties that he wins, he's like not really uh, he's not alone there, even though he's the only living person there. And uh, then there's like this crazy guy that comes up to him and who's like apparently has something to do with all the infectious stuff in the house and just runs around and. Being like, yeah, you should uh, clean up my mess, basically. is basically what it comes down to. Okay, so for the first half of that description, I thought you were talking about Luigi. But, um, un unsure. I, I don't think it's Luigi anymore, but we had uh, CGS in, in chat guessing a character from Half-Life. Would, would that be correct? I was actually describing Luigi. Yeah. Oh, you were. Yes, <laughs> you got it. Hey. I was to like Luigi's mansion, where he wins a mansion and it's infected by ghosts and. Oh, okay, right. I get you. I get you. Um, just before I do my turn on this, we have an update from Game Commander in chat. Uh, Ame is asleep, so Ame was meant to be one of the runners. So I think they're trying to figure that out now. And yes, there's some, uh, we're still feeling the effects of Otogi. Um, but yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go, well, we'll go with you, What do you have in mind then for a uh, character slash story? Okay, so he's a wizard with a strange fascination for pointy hats and long flowing beards. He's always meddling in the affairs of young students, teaching them potentially dangerous spells and... Um, essentially treats them with no regard for their for their lives um, and you know he's also quite an avid bird collector he um, he loves his birds and yeah do you have any any clue or do you need a bit more than that I feel like I have a feeling from which franchise you're describing a character from but then uh, I'm afraid to say it that I <laughs> I have very little knowledge of this franchise, which I should be ashamed of, because it sounds kind of like you're describing one of the teachers in Harry Potter. That's true, that's true. I am. And that's where my uh, knowledge falls off. I know some of the professors, so I'm just going to go with uh, McGonagall. It isn't. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, see, that's where my knowledge of Harry Potter falls off. I know, like... I knew that was a teacher, and uh, yeah, furthermore, uh, I would it, not it, have it, any further guess. But CGS seems to potentially have an idea, and Chad, maybe, maybe it is. It is Dumbledore. Well done. Wow. Okay, do you want to go again? Do you have any any more you'd like to do? Because I, I I think I think I have my next one. Oh, uh, I didn't think of another one yet. I wasn't <laughs> expecting at first to be stalling for this one. So you do another one while I also think of a second to uh, describe. Okay, so it's, it's a guy who wears a red suit, red and black suit, 
and spends his time chimichanga fueled, breaking the fourth wall and annoying everyone around him. And um, yeah, so that I, I, I'm giving brief descriptions, but I think it's you know it's a, um, they're they're detailed enough. So a chimichanga fueled person wearing a red suit who breaks the fourth wall. I am really trying to think here. I... Yes, CGS, it is you. Indeed. Oh, dang. Um, the character is from Mar a Marvel film. Well, a few Marvel films now. Ah, uh, I see. I, I was so in my video game mind, so I was like, not really thinking of movies. Yes, I, I'd know my movies better than I'd, I'd know my video games now. Um, but that was that was a description for Deadpool um, from the Marvel films. I, I I feel like I'm explaining these relatively mediocre, so they're they're good enough that they're not so bad that it would just um, you'd get it immediately from just the sheer outlandishness of it. But they're also not good enough to where you'd they're obvious enough to get it. So I, I think I think I'm just bad at this. But you know it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I think um, we did a pretty good job here. We did, and we've had word from the runners, so Ame will not be joining us for the next run, so it'll be a three-person lockout. And the runners will be joining us shortly, so we'll just have a quick quick intermission here, and then when we're back, we will be back with Near Automa with um, a lockout, so stay tuned. See you in a bit. First bingo! Hello, welcome back. So we they have located a May. They found him uh, out the back of Floha's house, taking a taking a quick nap. So uh, while Tech resets everything to be four player again because they had just gotten the three three person layout sorted, we'll just give buy the buy them a little bit more time. Um, speaking of buying things, you could um, buy, I suppose, or participate or you know contribute to the upcoming bid wars that we have the final fantasy 5 career day um 85 more dollars towards that and um they have to defeat the portal boss or um if you donate six dollars you can donate that towards the bart's name for the also for final fantasy 5 the career day where you get to name the character or the bart's name uh that'll be six characters max and there's there's a f there's a few more uh, names that you can bid towards there. Some of them you just donate as low as four dollars and you can choose the name. 
Um, but well, now we've got what... like, like a bunch of organizer and staff names uh, lined up for them. And, uh, which is really cool, of course, but wouldn't this also be funny if there's like four Floas? Like, imagine calling all the characters Floa. How crazy that would get. It would be absolute chaos, which I think if Panda's watching would absolutely love to see. Um, and even if he isn't, you know, we can do it in the spirit of him anyway. Um, but just to remind everyone, this marathon marks five years since the original Bingothon marathon in December of 2018. That's a long time ago now. And in that time, we've raised over $28,000 for various charities, completed 11 marathons and branched out into various external events and content including the Blind Bingo series or the Breath of the Wild Bingo Bash, among several other ones. To everyone who has been here in some shape or form since the first marathon, thank you, and here's to another five years. Um, yeah. I'd also like to give a big thank to uh, Team17 for sponsoring uh, the Bingo Sun Winter 23 event and also for the continuous support within the past few events. They've actually provided us with a bunch of prizes that you can win during uh, this event by donating towards Fred Hutch. Uh, if you donate at least $25, you'll be eligible for uh, like five game packs or six game packs even uh, provided to us by Team17. Uh, all types of different packs, a story rich pack, a platformer pack, horror pack, family friendly pack, a co-op pack, bunch of cool packs that you can win uh, by just donating. So, you know, you support a good charity and you get the chance to win a lot of cool games. So if you're interested in that, make sure to donate towards that. Exactly. And, you know, it all the money donated, it goes towards the Fred Hutch charity. And Bingothon has raised over $13,000 for Fred Hutch in the past three years, all going towards life-saving research treatments and patient care, as well as helping over 80,000 people receiving the COVID-19 vaccine at Fred Hutch in the last couple of years. Furthermore, this is helping Fred Hutch unlock how cancers and infectious diseases start and spread, harnessing the immune system to fight diseases and working to make a treatment more equitable and accessible for more people. Can we make it $15,000 raised in total for them? I think we can. And there's a couple more prizes to be won on top of the game packs that Shadow mentioned, including uh, Bingothon mugs. So if you donate $5 or more, you'll be entered into the giveaway for the neutral Bingothon mug. Uh, a classic, a staple, if you will, over here at Bingothon. And if you That's donate... Right, like right next to me, and it's really, really cool. It is. It makes your drinks taste a million times better. Um, that's That's been scientifically proven. And, you know, we have the fifth anniversary edition of the Bingothon mug. If you donate $10 or more, you'll be entered into that giveaway as well. Um, but yeah, so that's that's um, uh, the sh some of the shoutouts we wanted to do. And, you know, in the last intermission we had, we got the first bingo on our host bingo board. Um, which is nice. We're kind of, we're about halfway on that, I'd say. We're, we're getting there. We have 13 out of the 25 done, so we're we're halfway we're halfway through the bingo board, and hopefully in the coming intermissions we'll get to see a lot more um, clippable content, and it'll be it'll be fun. Um, so hopefully, with the near autumn run can start shortly. Um, but yeah, so we we are waiting for that. But in the meantime, um, I wonder, would we be able to um, would we be able to maybe say a few tongue twisters, Shadow? As that is one of the um, one of the host bingo goals. Oh boy, uh, I can definitely try that. You know, uh, me not being a native. English speaker, that's going to be a very, very difficult task for me. So I think that would be extremely fun to do. So uh, I can look some up and uh, try to say them and um, say sorry in advance uh, for how my English pronunciation is going to be during those. Yeah, and I might I might try a few in a few different languages if we have the time. Um... And I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, see if I can find a few here. Uh, and, um, yeah, hopefully okay. it'll be a bit of fun. I, I do just get the notice that we should be good to go now. Do we still want to go for it, or uh, 
maybe maybe in the next intermission because I believe you and I are here um, after this run finishes uh, Shadow so we can we can maybe do it in the next intermission but yeah so if the runners are ready to come in we'll just again pop back into the silence of intermission and then we'll be back with you in just a few minutes so don't go anywhere see you in a bit 